Hey, it's Jelso with CS Apex Landscape Design. I am coming to you with another video. Uh, this time I am in between appointments, so I thought I would give you guys some quick tips and tricks while I'm in between things. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but it is hot. It is currently 95 degrees here. It was 101 last week in Colorado. It's warm. It's July. It's warm. So what do you do for your landscape when it is this warm out, when it's hot and quite frankly, just a little bit miserable for both you and your plants? Now, here's a couple of things you can do and I'm going to then talk about what we shouldn't do. So what we could do, what we should do, we should definitely deadhead. What this means is anything that was blooming last month, two months ago and it's no longer pretty it's no longer has those pretty blooms on it great example is daylilies they went from having these beautiful pinks and yellows on them now those aren't there anymore and they're looking a little ugly take off just those blooms now daylilies are a little tricky because it's sometimes hard to tell where exactly to deadhead i just say right below the plant the bloom other plants, it's a little bit easier. So say salvias, sages. You want to go to just above that last set of leaves and you want to pinch them off. Great thing about these plants is when they want to be deadheaded, when they're ready to be deadheaded, a pinch and they're done. Start picking those fruits and veggies that we worked so hard to get to grow. Now's a great time to get out there and harvest your spinach. Harvest any strawberries that you see on your plants. Start harvesting what's there. You grew them so you could eat them, so eat them. Big, big, big thing in both Colorado and all over the United States is we need to water. Even if you're on an automatic drip system, which I highly recommend, you still wanna be checking on those plants. 95 degrees is hot for everybody, including your plants. They might need a little extra water. They might need some water supplement. So make sure that they're getting enough water. Go out and check on them. Now, as the weather warms up, it is time that you can start planting your warm weather starts. So that's your peppers. That's maybe some melons. Uh, now I will caution on melons specifically. In Colorado, we do have a short growing season. You will probably need to cover them if you're starting them in July, but you can still start them. Just make sure you cover them, keep them a little extra warm, a little extra protection as we get into September and October. Now, peppers, ready to go, put them in. Squash, if you didn't start them from seed, Go get those starts. Find what's left in the garden center and go ahead and plant them. Worst case, you spent a dollar, it might not survive. Or you spent a dollar and you got some awesome fruits and veggies. Your choice. Now, something to consider when it is 95 degrees out, when it's 100 degrees out and it's warm, it's sunny, it's hot, consider putting up some shade tarp. Now, what shade tarp specifically does is it cuts out those really harsh rays but still allows sunlight to go to those plants now these are great in these warm weather days they're great for a little extra protection as we come into hail season hail cloth in general is just a really good idea for gardens now a few things that you can start sowing you can actually start sowing some seeds in July sunflowers great example time to get those uh, fall sunflowers out uh, starting your second round of spinach starting your second round of carrots start setting start sowing in some of those seeds that that you want for them for the fall now I will say this maybe don't do those so don't start sowing your veggies in July 4th Maybe push those back to July 20th, July 25th. But definitely sunflower seeds, go ahead and sow right now. Here's one that often gets forgotten and neglected, your house plants. Yo, know, they're house plants for a reason because they can't survive in our generally harsher 
nights, our colder nights, our colder weather. However, they are designed to grow well in 90 degree weather in the tropics. Now, Colorado's a bit strange because we don't have that humidity to go with it, but they want that heat. And especially if you have house plants that have maybe some pests on it, some bugs, it happens, don't feel bad. But now's a great time, put them outside because those bugs aren't made to survive in our weather either. So, your plants will love it, your bugs will hate it. Put those plants outside, give them a little extra love. Now with that, make sure you water them. You want to make sure that because we are lower humidity here in Colorado, we are lower humidity in the western states, you want to make sure that those house plants are still getting enough water. So there are some to do's. Here's what you should not do. Fertilize. Oh, I've heard mixed opinions on this. Some people say, go ahead and fertilize your grass in, this, in July. Now, July's a great time to fertilize plants. Mm, I differ slightly because what I have seen happen is people will put down that fertilizer and then not water. And then we end up getting burnt out grass and we end up getting brown grass. You don't want that. That completely defeats the purpose. Now you've spent money on fertilizer that's not doing its job. Now you've spent time and energy and you've, in, you've killed your grass. So I say, leave out the fertilizer. What everything really needs right now is water. Just like you need water, it needs water. Now, the last do nots, and this again is a little controversial. Do not prune in July please, please, please do not prune in July. Realize that when it's 90 degrees outside, when it is hot and it is dry, as soon as you do any sort of trauma to your plants, you're gonna have a higher risk of killing them. And I hate to say it, pruning, although it is needed, plants want it, they don't want it during the hottest part of the year. So. If you haven't pruned yet, hold off a little bit. Wait until we get past these 90 degree days and get maybe more into the 80 degree days. You just wanna get over this hump of heat. Now, ideally, you wanna prune right after that plant is done blooming. So in the cases of lilacs, in the cases of most spireas, they're done blooming in June. You typically want to prune in June. June was a crazy busy month for me. I'm sure it was a crazy busy month for a lot of you. So if you didn't prune in June, don't worry about it. It's okay. Just wait until we get more to the 80 degree days instead of the 90 degree days. Now, the one exception for that is roses. Roses, if you have roses in your yard, you're probably familiar that they need a lot of extra care, a lot of extra babying anyway. That includes pruning. They want to have some heavy haircuts. They want that little bit of trauma because that encourages them to bloom again in the fall. Generally, pruning, if you're in doubt, if you're questioning it, wait, wait. Your plants will do a lot better and they will love you more if you wait. Now, this saying that, you don't want to wait too long. Anything that sets its buds in the fall is you don't want to wait until September. Just in general, don't wait until September. The exception is things that start blooming in August, that start blooming in September. Those guys, the typical, wait until they're done blooming. Everything else, as soon as we kick these 90 degree, 90 degree days, prune those plants if you haven't already. So there are my quick tips and tricks for what you should do in July or in the heat of the summer. Get out there, enjoy your garden, and stay tuned for the next video.